Chapter 1, page 4, reading 2. Bystanders Just Stand By, by Mike Tidwell. It's midnight at a sandwich shop just outside of Boston. I enter with three of my friends, all of us male, in our late twenties. We go to the counter to order, but something is very wrong. In one corner are four men, also in their twenties. They're drunk and very loud. They make offensive comments to the staff and throw food in the direction of customers. A chill runs down my spine. It's clear. These men want to fight. I look at my three friends. We communicate with our eyes. If they touch any of us, we all jump in. Then another man enters the shop, alone. He carries a book bag. Hey, I like your purse, one of the drunk men says to him. It's an insult. Another insult follows, and suddenly two of the men walk over and begin hitting the new man. This happens right in front of me and my friends, and we do absolutely nothing. We don't move. We're afraid. The beating goes on. An innocent person is being hurt right next to me. I look quickly at the drunk men. They're looking around. They're hoping that we'll join the fight. These are experienced fighters, reckless from drink, violent by nature. Surely they have knives, perhaps guns. The victim is calling for help. I know my inaction is wrong. My cowardice shocks me. I think to myself, if they endanger his life, we'll act. Just then, the shop manager yells that the police are coming. The drunk men kick the man again, then run out the door. The injured man stands and turns to me and my friends. Why? he asks. Why didn't you help me? You just stood there and watched. We look down and say nothing. All these years later, I'm still trying to answer the question. Why? Because at that moment, my fear of being hurt was greater than my desire to help a stranger. For my friends, I would have risked injury, but not for a stranger, unless he was being killed. This explanation isn't sufficient, of course, when I put myself in the victim's shoes. How could four young men stand by and watch while I'm savagely beaten? The only moral choice was to help. Looking back, I understand why I didn't act, but I've lived with shame all these years, too. If it happens again, I like to think that I'll act differently, that I'll be courageous rather than cowardly. But there's a new problem now. My decisions affect more than just me. I have a ten-month-old child. Do I risk leaving him fatherless? My mind says no, 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 until, again, I place myself as victim. I see myself pleading for assistance. Please, for my child's sake, help me. I have another friend, Myron, who recently knocked a gun from a robber's hand, allowing his four companions to escape unharmed. But Myron was beaten and could have been shot. I'd do it again, Myron says, but you never know until it happens. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. We can't always do what's right, and that's wrong. We can't always know what's right, and there's reason to be sorry.